Welcome to the Curious Club podcast. Today our curiosity takes us to someone who has worn multiple hats across her career spanning more than 25 years. She is currently partner at Erowin Capital Fund, which is one of the leading venture debt players in India. Welcome to the show Tarana. Thanks. So Tarana, let's start with your journey. Uh you were born and brought up in Bombay, then you moved to Kodaikanal for your boarding school, then to US for your further studies, worked in US for 10 years, then back to Mumbai. So take us through that journey. What was it like? It was, I mean honestly boarding school was the best experience of my life so born and brought up in Bombay went to an all girls school which was a fantastic experience as well and then I think boarding school defined me in a lot of ways one I do have my closest friends from JB where I spent 12 years but I have you know five or six of my core friends but boarding school I have I mean I spent 2 years but I have like 20 closest friends I would say if not more But I think it's the bond that you created there. I mean, when I was yeah. in JB, I was very clear. I was doing an engineering degree, joining my dad in business. You know, sort of lived in that shelter. Yeah, I definitely had this whole aspiration of going to the US, coming back. Boarding school sort of made me more aware what the world had to offer mm-hmm. in terms of you know what is Wall Street and finance, and I didn't know those things. So good and bad because it sway- swayed me away from doing an engineering degree, which I regret, to doing a business degree. but i think it also opened me up to a lot of things including the fact that you know i mean you were just rough and tough in school so you mm. just i mean i i changed me as a person when i became more outgoing that was boarding school and as i said i i think everyone should go to boarding school in so 11th 12th 11th 12th and in those days we did the ib mm-hmm. then i went off to the us where i did my undergrad at a school in philadelphia then worked at morgan stanley for four years then went to columbia for my mba then did abs mbs mortgage backed securities for a couple of years in the us saw the dot com bubbles and uh, and also i had reached a point where i wanted to come back to india so i was looking for a way to come back and everyone was like oh you know you got to go back with a proper job you can't just go back and blah blah so trying to figure that piece out and i sort of stumbled into the venture ecosystem So I came back with a startup to do biz dev, which meant going to Taiwan to meet OEM manufacturers. And I thought, "Chalo, this is my way to make millions of dollars. So why not?" <laughs> uh, very early days in product. Spent a year there. Quit within a year, and then um, ended up sort of juggling two things. Got actively involved with Mumbai Angels, looking at early stage investing, as well as helping a friend friend with his education venture. So landscaping the whole education market from. And that time there was. There was no byjus or yeah. an academy or any of that. It was just Educom and Everon, in sort of what you would call ed tech. So landscaping the whole market from toys to K twelve to vocational, which was a great learning in some way. Sort of trying to figure out how you sort of, you know, and also re- at that point, interestingly, recognizing what is the TAM. Yes, yes. Um, and you know, you think, oh, all these projects can be so lucrative, and then we go do these analysis, and you realize that to make a K twelve, I mean, after Even if you open ten K to Ls, you'll end up just with a at that point hundred million valuation. You know, like that's it. So it was interesting, and spent a couple of years at uh, sort of doing these two gigs or whatever, freelancing, wasting my time, whatever you want to call it, and then ended up at Seed Fund, where I spent six years doing early stage investing. And Seed Fund was a you know one of the at that point premium early stage investment, uh, small investment. Uh, shops in the country started by Praveen Gandhi spent 6 years there learned a lot on the early stage side how to you know i mean just in terms of what it's like to balance founders investment mm. fiduciary responsibility um and from there then joined innoven where now i spent almost 6 years doing venture debt so sort of gradually moved to the dark side again you worked across multiple industry what made you end up in the venture debt industry so it was honestly by accident if i have to be <laughs> honest Um actually moving to venture itself was a stroke yeah. of going you know uh, a random draw of the luck and then if i have to be candidly honest you know once you reach a certain level in a seed fund i was like sort of this principal plus level it's very hard to make a lateral move and mm. so it the honest truth is it was it was you know they were looking for someone and so and i still could be in the venture ecosystem so what i realized by then what i enjoyed was meeting interesting founders learning about new ventures and i had no great idea of my own others i'd probably do a startup but so i figured okay you know i since i don't have any great ideas at least this way i get to meet people who are interesting yeah and at least when you're at a fund early stage fund like seed fund you do a lot of hand holding with your companies you work a lot with mm. them it could be 
figuring out the colors of the logo to pricing points. And so I felt, okay, you know, why not? I still get to be in the ecosystem. So that right. sort of Got made it. me move to the debt side. So uh, let me uh, hmm. want to understand about venture debt, how it works. Simply venture debt is a debt to startups, which would be at a higher interest rate because you take more risk over there. But for startups, it's not like equity. You can't, you can't, of it's course. not a free money. You, you have to return it back along with interest. Like every month you have yeah. to pay it back. So what kind of startups are suitable for that? Let me correct. We do take a higher interest for the risk. You're right. But it is not so high. Yeah. And the debt has two components. It has a coupon, a fixed correct. income coupon, which is around 13, 14%, 14%. And then we take an equity kicker for the upside. Correct. Now, the way to look at it is not all companies are suitable. Now, the reason these companies take venture debt is mm. not so much that only the risk is high. Also, they don't qualify for traditional debt. Banks will ask you for personal guarantees. Right. They ask for a lot of covenants that don't, you know, will not fit for with a startup. So that's where we play a role. And there are in the startup ecosystem, there are companies that have a working capital requirement or a capex. Mm -hmm. I mean, using equity money for that doesn't make sense. So we may be high, but we're still cheaper than equity. Correct. So that's where we can, we play a role. And that those are, I mean, if a company has a working capital requirement or capex, they should definitely consider venture debt. And there are other use cases. It could be like an insurance policy where you want to raise a little more money. Hmm. See, ultimately it's capital. And yes, it is serviceable and it is debt. But the way to look at it also helps you build discipline. Hmm. So you look at it as a combination of equity and debt. What we are not is not a bridge loan. So where a company has three months runway and they come for debt doesn't make sense. Correct. And it's twofold. One, as a debt provider, of course, I want to be on top of the waterfall. And, you know, you don't want to unnecessarily... I have a fiduciary responsibility to LPs that I have to pay back. But also, as a founder, you don't want to take debt at that point because you're anyway struggling. And mm -hmm. the last thing you want to do is, an, and not only in a startup, in any business, adding debt when you can't service it is just it's, not a good idea. Correct. correct. So that's sort of what venture debt is. And the companies, I'd say, is ideally, you want to be a series A and above company where you at least have a product market fit, some revenue mm -hmm. that, you know, we can come in and in an ideal world, Venture debt should play a role between CDs A and C because you hope beyond CDs C, D, these companies qualify for traditional debt. Okay. But given where the market has been, we have exceptionally come into pre CDs A companies as well that we're bullish on and also done later stage companies. It. it is basically a top up to your equity round, which can help a company sometimes maybe have a little more capital. That's the way to sort of. A little more, less dilution. Oh, of course. Dilution is definitely less. Oh. Okay. But it gives, you know, sometimes as I said, experimentation, right? Say mm -hmm. you want to experiment and do go into a different market. Yeah. If you have a little more capital, you can think of taking that chance. Mm -hmm. In this environment where equity rounds are taking longer, having a little more money in the bank doesn't hurt. Yeah. So had you raised some venture debt, it will give you that little cushion. And what are the payment uh, period like for? Uh, you know, we do working capital loans, which are a 12 month structure, but generally it's a loan with a tenor anywhere from say 18 months to 36 months. Mm -hmm with some moratorium generally, anywhere from two to six months of moratorium. So moratorium is in start, you don't have to pay. Yeah, you interest. don't have to pay principal. Interest principal, is always payable. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Principal Got is it. always payable. So, so how do you evaluate any startup for venture debt? So what's your diligence process? Uh, the diligence process, we're not as stringent as equity guys, mm -hmm. but in our diligence, so the one thing as debt players, we wear the debt hat and we wear the equity hat. So I wear the debt hat where I monitor cash flows very closely. So I'll be honest, when I moved to Innoven, even though I'd done an accounting undergrad degree and had been at seed fund and for the last, you know, I forgot what a balance sheet was or working capital was because mm -hmm. I'd only be looking at P&L burn. Mm -hmm. But as debt providers, you look at the cash, cash flow. burn, cash flow. So it's, it's not just P&L burn. It is also what you're burning on working capital, capex, money coming in, money going out. So the one good thing is we monitor that very well. And that's our first primary sort of diligence. We underwrite the financial model very closely along with the business. Um, we also look at in terms of, you know, does this company have enough runway? Like I said, you know, I mean, coming into a company that has three months runway would be unfair to the company and to me because mm -hmm. I'd be just adding to their load versus helping them. Where, so that's, our, I would say, our first sort of criteria or checkbox. And does this company have 12 months plus runway, ideally? Yeah. I mean, we have exceptionally done nine months, but right. generally it's a 12 month sort of runway. Then we start looking at the business, the numbers, what is discretionary spend, what, where are they burning? Is it a balance sheet burn? Is it a P&L burn? Mm -hmm. Sort of those criteria. 
then that's more on the financial debt side. Then you wear the equity hat that, okay, now who are the what quality of founder? Similar to an equity yeah. guy, right? Because how do I get paid is the next step, right? I get paid, assuming it's say the company has 12 months, mm. I get paid over the next 24 months. Mm. So yes, the company has money to pay me for the next say six, eight months. But what happens after? How am I going to get paid for the balance of my loan? is if the company raises an X round of equity and they continue being operational. Mm. Now for that, I have to wear the equity hat. Is the company, I mean, what is the quality of founders? What are they building? Are they a market leader? Are they not a market leader? What are, you know, where do where, what where will this capital take them? So you sort of wear the mm. equity hat there and then take a call on the company and also obviously what my warrants will be worth, right? Yeah. So it's a mix of that. So it's sort of a hybrid model of debt and then equity wearing a little bit of equity mindset that can I take a chance and mm -hmm. give this company a loan. So in loan, the amount wise, is there a way like percentage of what equity funding you have received you will get as a debt? Like So back of the envelope, we say it's between 15 to 25% of money in the bank because we're okay. assuming most wow. times when you have money in the bank, it's going to last you for 12 to 18 months. Mm -hmm. Now there are exceptions. There could be a company that has 36 months runway, in which Correct. case they should not even consider debt and I should get shot for saying this. <laughs> There are companies that may have 24 months runway, but they're using it all for CapEx or working capital. So there I could even give them a higher quantum. Mm -hmm. Or there could be a company that's going to go blow. I mean, they could have a lot of money, but they could be burning it in six months, in which case I may not give them anything. Mm -hmm. So I think it back of the envelope, 15 to 25% of money in the bank. But Got there's it. no hard and fast to that. Got it. So we have understood about uh, mentioned yeah. it. So now recently, like a lot of startups have gone under investigation due to a lot of corporate governance issue. And recently, I think Nitin Kamath has posted on mm -hmm. Twitter also. He was telling about the reason, like primary issue behind is that we as a founders or investors overestimate the target market we have in it. Yeah. And that leads to a lot of problems. Because if you have sold one lie, then you have to keep covering it with other lies. Yeah, it's true. I don't think it was deliberately a lie. I think it just we were all in a euphoria of Oh, this is, yes, the TAM, I read the piece as well. And I agree with him. I mean, I think he makes a very valid point. I think we were all sort of caught up in it, right? I mean, unfortunately, a lot of us, mm -hmm. a lot of us investors did come from abroad. We sort of measure everything in dollar terms. Yeah. So I think yeah. that's where we all sort of lost the plot. We're like, okay, this is all in dollars. Okay, if they can be billion, but you know, not realizing that we're a, I and our, our GDP is different, our GDP per capita is different. Yeah. And so we should measure things on that TAM or that monetization model yeah. and then automatically everything would get sort of downsized. So I think that did create a little bit of a mismatch mm -hmm. in what expectations we all as investors and LPs abroad may have had of what India has to bring. Um, but sorry to your question, I interrupted you. No, no, I just want to understand what do you think issues are? Uh, so I think the issues on investigation in most cases, well, I mean, this is this is a point. I think what ended up what has ended up happening a lot of founders in the in the in the euphoria of the last few years sort of got caught up in okay you know what I need to I, and as, as I said I don't think it was intentional on either side but it just ended up being people start getting caught up in the frenzy of having to prove things and somewhere you know unfortunately these founders then started hmm. playing with their books and yeah. that created and as investors I think we, maybe we were also partly I wrong irresponsible the last few years where we were. We were so founder friendly, all of us, you know, to appease the founder, you know, I mean, I mean, like uh, I was speaking to someone and he made an interesting point. He, he said he, he was his point was India was more like that. And I was like, you know, actually, when you think about it, yeah, we I mean, what are our wireless passwords? Save on dilution. And I don't know when we'll have founder friendly, founder first. So those sort of we were so caught up in trying to appease to the founders because the market was skewed towards okay. founders with the cheap capital that we and having very few quality founders that we were all just sort of like, okay, just look the other way. Mm. And as I said, I, everyone was thinking we'll figure it out, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. fake it till you make it sort of thing. Correct. So I don't think anyone was went in intentionally. I think it just so happened. And I think what the slowdown does is it puts us all back, take a step back to get our houses in order and just figure things out and be okay. Now let's build the businesses the right way with responsibility. So I think it was just more, irrational behavior than anything mm -hmm. that led to the issues we had. Got it. Did you experience any kind of these startups like where ha there has been corporate uh, governance? No, touch wood. Luckily in our portfolio, we have so far, n none of our companies have a corporate governance issue. Got it. Will we have some stress? Yes, we will all have some stress. Yeah. But none of the stress, at least what we see foresee right now is because of 
governance issues now because in india a lot of money which has gone into startup which goes into it it has come from outside india like fdi mm-hmm. is an lp is sitting outside india putting money in india so how does they look at the ecosystem when there's such a bad news around the ecosystem like the players of the it is bad yeah. i'm not taking away and i i have a huge issue with fraud and issues mm-hmm. like that or people doing wrong in, in any form but i don't think it's an india centric problem alone yes we are dependent on foreign money and um, so there is a perception issue to a small degree but there's enough wrong that has happened globally and especially in the us so i mm. wouldn't hold it that and even now and i maybe i'm an optimistic and i have to be being in the yeah, venture right. ecosystem i mean we're okay there will be some questions as long as we can show that we are doing the right things now I mean we are one of the fastest growing yeah. economies in the world and we still have uh, we still have some promising people around here to make things happen so Correct. Correct. I'm uh, I think we'll be okay but there will be little slowdown of things course, will take the slowdown is I think the slowdown and the shortage of capital is not only because of governance issues yeah. it is just what slowdown. is overall yeah, yeah. that's yeah. that's all I'm clarifying yeah. that yeah of course there'll be a little tightness in capital but it's not necessarily a bad thing yeah even as equity investors when i was at seed fund we were not closing a deal a month or two deals a month we were closing maybe three or four deals a year yeah, five deals a year 60 deals a year that's what you do correct got it so you yeah. don't close some 50 deals a year <laughs> so but uh, if you have some suggestions like for the investors who are in the ecosystem what is the way of solving these issues that didn't uh, rise up in future <laughs> <laughs> well i mean i think the investors or my peers know better than i do but i think it would be good for all of us to start just as when when we evaluate we have this we we tend to gravitate towards founders who are you know brash and and uh, you know oh he's charismatic he's an alpha, alpha male he's a type a personality mm-hmm. um sometimes even brushing certain red flags you know as saying oh you know this is fine they don't want to share data it's okay they've got you know i mean they're in demand for more but i think we just need to bring a little more discipline into our lives and being a little more one discipline that okay no there are certain checklists certain things i need on the data part but even on personality traits you know recognizing that you know if uh, not just getting carried away by someone because they're brash and saying okay you know what let me let me applaud somebody who's more diligent or calm or whatever doing ref checks i think in the last two three years we were not doing ref checks not just at on founders even on on CXOs that were getting hired at these companies or leadership roles i mean we should just be a little more aware and sort of look at for patterns has it happened in last 2 3 years or uh, uh, where investors have invested money in startups without having any information like because of fomo possibly yeah got there are two types of founders the one who are chasing valuations and the one who actually creates value <laughs> so i want to ask what kind of traits do you look in founders while investing in them similar to what i said earlier to my last uh, to your last question i think it's it's very important to look at you know what they did prior what their pattern is and do they have the relevant experience and just as individuals i always say at least at an early stage the founder is the face of the company yeah. they are selling the company to employees to investors to clients everyone and they have to be likable and trustworthy mm. so i think those are the key traits i look for someone who's likable and someone who i can trust mm. and uh, recently i saw i know i saw the movie air i don't know if you saw it and uh, phil knight and then i saw coincidentally a week or 10 days later i saw of course or a month later whatever i saw super pumped and you can see the character differences right in the founders and i think we all sort of miss those we we saw, there's a fine line between being confident and obnoxious and i think that's what we need to start recognizing and looking for in our founders there's one thing that you also uh, mm. do ref checks and about the founders but the other thing around is like even founders want to know their investors yeah. so has it happened that founders have told you that i want to know your yeah yeah of course and we connect them to founders and say please speak to them correct i'm correct. counting on them working and doing ref checks on me because i believe it correct. should help correct so what are the upcoming trends and opportunities you see in india like india is fastest growing across globally what are the good opportunities you see right so of course globally there's ai which will follow but i personally am still very bullish on fintech and healthcare mm-hmm. i think with the the population with the mid you know with the aspiration and our income levels growing and the middle class growing i think those are two sectors that could still have more opportunities for us that could be disruptive so those are two sectors that i definitely see that there could be some 
mm. you know yeah and the other would be manufacturing where we get yeah a and lot of course of manufacturing very good point yes and i'm very i mean i would favor manufacturing because i think manufacturing will not only just it will just help overall right from the blue collar to employment, employment yeah. to everything and actually personally I, i mean i go back to econ 101 you need real productivity in the country ultimately correct so yeah. in, you need real things to be manufactured i need real food i need to mm. eat correct <laughs> it's great i'll have 20 games to play with but if i don't have food or right. whatever so yeah my next question i was yeah. uh, going through your linkedin so i want to mm. talk about the bad boys of social media <laughs> So how does this abuse of social equity affects the players in the ecosystem over? I mean we've all heard and know of uh, of certain founders right who have who put on this persona on social media but it's not reflective of who they truly are. I mean they could be womanizers or they could be pe- people who are actually non-performers or they have not uh, really done right in their prior roles mm-hmm. but on social media they come across as someone and then people sort of get carried away by that persona when the reality is they are not those individuals mm-hmm. and so i think my my point on on that post was twofold one was talking about how these and it can affect right i mean tomorrow sorry if you're if you're not someone who's a very good person and then you end up going and running a startup you can make the culture very difficult or if you're a womanizer you make it awkward if you're a perfect like angel investor on how you interact with other people you could make it awkward for a founder mm-hmm. what i was also reflecting in that is that sometimes when these people have done this in their prior roles it should be brought out because people go by their social persona they don't know the reality the organizations that they work for should bring this out so then it do- it's not repeated we could yeah, avoid yeah. so many catastrophes that have happened in the yeah. ecosystem because of this yeah so i think it was more sort of twofold it was related to on responsibility or the what prior organizations or organizations or as an ecosystem we can do because i mean we always say person resigns stem down blah blah mm-hmm. and on the part of you know with social media this all sort of gets misconstrued so so last question before we move mm-hmm. to the lightning round so so we have seen that uh, vc ecosystem has been male dominated and now mm-hmm. women are entering and you have been uh, setting an example over there so right. what what are your words of advice to women out there to want to thrive in this so i'll quickly tell you when i was at seed fund we were three women okay. uh, when i joined you know when we actually had a pre 50% of females as well unfortunately most of them have gone away to business schools so now a little male dominated um my only advice to women is i mean just believe in yourself and go for it i mean i don't think you should ever think i'm a woman and yeah. not there are they, i mean are, is it sometimes tough possibly but there's also i mean being a woman also works your advantage at times so there are strengths and weaknesses to each gender and you just just go for it i mean I, i've never thought oh, i'm a woman so i yeah. can't do something yeah. i just do my job and it will work out just be confident, confident and enough. believe in yourself don't don't play the woman card yeah. unnecessarily yeah. you know i mean so moving to the lightning round so it's a round okay. where you i'll ask question what it comes to your mind you just have to say <laughs> that uh mountains or beaches beaches best and worst advice is received you know i i don't think i've ever received worst advice best advice i think maybe my mom telling me impossible is in the fool's dictionary <laughs> so god uh, god so so you have done so much in life so hmm. what is your management mantra oh god my management mantra is that i am i have a little bit of insomnia and uh, i'm a little bit of combination of ocd and <laughs> that's the management mantra I, i i don't think i've done so much in life though so i still need to figure that out <laughs> what is your hack to survive mumbai monsoons leaving off is a <laughs> no go swimming every morning because i love i actually like the monsoon rain correct but when you're stuck in traffic then can i be a horrible human being and say that i just listen to music and talk on the phone <laughs> good time to catch good time to yeah correct yeah. correct god what's your favorite show to binge watch on netflix ooh right now Char- uh, queen charlotte Oh okay. What advice would you give to your younger self? Go with brain and not with heart. Oh. Okay. Any embarrassing Zoom call moment? Mm, no, I have to oh. be honest. Unfortunately, <laughs> none. Sorry, boring, but none. You look so young. What is the secret behind it? Huh? I got lucky with DNA, honestly, <laughs> parents. But uh, I'm a little shallow. So I do take care of myself in the sense that I am shallow about looks. So if I'm like if I'm a hip, if I'm shallow about it and I judge other people on it, then then I should try and keep. You know how do I criticize others if I'm not? So I do. I'm 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 exercise literally every day every of day. my life. 
I go oh, wow. for a swim or a run every day of my life. So, so it's a little wow. bit of luck, DNA from parents and the exercise. Correct. Good. Uh, last question: What is success for you? Success for me is uh, being personally and professionally in a place that I am content. So that's a great advice. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Tarana, for coming on the show and giving your views around a lot of questions I had around curiosity we had. But thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.